Public financing of elections involves more people in our democracy. It allows folks in your district to be actively involved in your uh, campaign by donating $5 contributions to your campaign. The same amount of money that I spend on a cup of coffee at Starbucks, I can support a clean elections candidate. And that means that I'm involved in the process. As the director of community affairs for one of the largest private sector labor unions in Arizona, I have seen more of our members get involved in the political process. One of the things I got to do this election cycle that I had not had an opportunity to do before is host a clean elections party for a series of candidates in my own legislative district. That involved inviting as many people as I could over to my home, each of them making a contribution of $5. That's all. Uh, what a refreshing change. Clean elections allows candidates to spend time with voters and constituents. The advantages of running as a clean elections candidate for me are truly that I have uh, much more time to spend with, uh, with my constituents and I don't have to worry about attending fundraising events. I can really talk about issues and spend my time going door to door, meeting with constituents and understanding what the issues are that concern them. I got to spend time with voters as opposed to spending time you know, dialing for dollars or trying to sell tickets to $250 or plate fundraisers. This was much better. And politicians say running as a clean elections candidate gives them an electoral advantage. I think that they, it's now a standard. Um, I, I don't think it means you win or it means you lose, but I think that they will look at two candidates and if they are very similar and one of them is running clean and the other one is not, it can have some influence, especially in a place like Portland. A person who runs on clean elections, they're letting me know that, you know, I, I'm not owned by any corporations, I'm not owned by uh, any PACs, I'm not owned by, you know, people who have a lot of money and a lot of influence. I'm running for the citizens. The good news is in a state like Maine, where people in the state legislature have gotten used to the system, three quarters of the legislators run under the system now, Republicans and Democrats. So once people get used to it, um, they love it. I mean, nobody would want to do it any other way. The idea of going back to raising all that money and tying yourself up, um, you know, and not being able to actually campaign with the voters, uh, I don't think you could talk people into going backwards on it. The clean election system reduces the impact of lobbyists and special interests. And once people are elected under the clean election system, they are accountable only to voters. It allows me to be independent. I'm able to walk into a committee hearing or a floor uh, debate and be able to do what is best for my district and not have to uh, worry about what special interest is thinking. The citizenry is more empowered simply because the candidates are no longer beholden to uh, big corporations, they're no longer beholden to political action committees. I think it increases my accountability because I know that in two years I have to get back out to those doors and talk to those same voters. And they're going to tell me if they're happy with what I've done or not. You're knocking on doors, you're meeting with constituents, you're involving them in the process, which creates more accountability, and it changes the way that you govern. Your legislator basically is beholden only to you, and you have as much access as anybody else. Um, if you are the poorest person or the richest person, you still have equal representation. And what a difference this new system has made where it's been put in place. More people are running for office, here in Arizona, we have seen an increase in competition with the introduction of campaign finance reform through clean elections. More people are running for office, and we're seeing seats that are challenged that haven't been challenged in years. More women and more minorities are running. It brings about inclusiveness. It also brings about a, a good amount of competitiveness, and it opens it up in diversity as well. Because of clean elections, voters have more choices and they're choosing clean elections candidates. Just look at the track record in the two states that have clean elections in place the longest since 2000. Today in Maine, 83% of the state Senate and 77% of the House is made up of legislators who were elected using the clean elections program. In Arizona, 10 out of 11 statewide office holders ran and won under their clean election system and 48% of the State House and 23% of the State Senate are members who ran using public funding. That's an increase from the previous election cycle. And in North Carolina, which in 2004 offered full public financing to judicial candidates for the first time, publicly financed candidates 
won both Supreme Court races and two of the three Court of Appeal seats. Being a Clean Elections elected official now, there's a lot of freedom that comes with that. I really can focus on what my constituents need and not worry about um, if I'm upsetting anybody and if it's going to cost me in the next election. Arizona was one of the first states in the United States to require our utilities to generate a portion of their electricity from renewable sources of energy such as solar. I'm not sure that would have happened in the old days when the utility uh, lawyers and lobbyists uh, had a great influence on the decisions of the commission. We have also been able to pass some very strong legislation around tobacco, um, around um, you know, tobacco taxes and banning smoking in public places. I'm sure that the fact that um, the tobacco industry has not been able to buy their way into elections or buy their votes was able to help that.